Joining us now is David Bonson, creator of the series No Free Lunch in Defense of Free Enterprise. He's also managing partner and founder of the Bonson Group. Welcome, David. Uh, let's start with the congressman's pledge to withhold his vote on the debt ceiling uh, limit vote. That seems to further complicate House Speaker McCarthy's negotiations with the president while he's also trying to balance keeping his entire conference united. David, is that threat enough to dash a possible compromise over lifting the debt limit ceiling or was a compromise ever within reach? It's hard to say. I don't think that we know enough to know where some of the other uh, kind of hardliners are on this issue. Uh, obviously, we know mathematically one vote can't throw things off if there really was consensus one way or the other in a different direction. Uh, the problem is that there's not a big margin because it isn't unified. There isn't unanimous consensus on what to do. So Speaker McCarthy has his work cut out for him, uh, but uh, ultimately his objective has always been to get some spending cuts uh, even if they're largely cosmetic, some form of reduced spending as a trade-off to uh, lifting the debt li limit. Now, David, what are the economic consequences of a U.S. debt default? Well, there won't be a debt default. And so the, the re answer is it would be awful, but uh, that isn't on the table. Even if they don't lift the debt limit, a debt default is a technical term. And it means the inability to make a principal or interest payment on debt. And there is absolutely no chance, even if they don't issue new debt, meaning they don't lift the limit for new debt issuance, no chance that they would have to not make a principal or interest payment on our treasury debt. They would have to reprioritize other spending. There were th bills that would not get paid but not a debt default. It just simply isn't on the table. And it's a scare tactic that has been used by some of the left to, I think, improperly characterize what's going on. But that doesn't David, necessarily, yeah. I'm sorry, yeah, perhaps not a default, but uh, even the last time when it came to brinksmanship, uh, we had a lower credit rating. So won't that affect us somehow if we don't get this uh, meted out? Yeah, in fairness, there's been seven times since the 2011 incident you referred to where we also had a delay in extending the debt limit, including actual shutdowns that took place on two different occasions. And in neither case was there any lasting impact. In 2011, though, I do not believe that the credit downgrading from AAA to AA plus was entirely about our issue with the debt limit. I think at the time there were issues going on with Europe that largely mm. convoluted that. I know you have a Wall Street Journal op-ed out this week about your response to media reports that J.P. Morgan uh, has been debanking customers over their political and religious leanings. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, one thing that I did not do with my shareholder proposal is demand that they do something pro-Christian or pro-conservative. I simply wanted, as a shareholder in J.P. Morgan, which I am, both for myself personally, on behalf of our clients at my firm, um, asked them to do a study to ensure that their commitments to diversity were including uh, religious and political diversity, that they were not discriminating against people on the basis of their religious or political beliefs. If they were doing so, I think it not only would be wrong ideologically and um, against the fabric of our nation, but as a fiduciary, they are not supposed to do things that hurt the business. And 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 mm -hmm. arbitrarily getting rid of customers for religious reasons uh, would be totally unacceptable. So we're asking them mm -hmm. to ensure and do an investigation that those things are not happening. All right. David Bonson with the Bonson Group. Thank you so much, David. Thank you for having me.